Okay, hello and welcome back. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about using weight uh, while you're training. Um, I think it's pretty under understood pretty well that uh, if you're using like uh, for back squat, deadlift, front squat, um, or any of the ollie movements with uh, the Olympic barbell, okay, I think that's a pretty well discussed topic. Um, I'm not going to go into that so much. What I want to talk about more is for the movement's sake and uh, thinking about getting more creative with weight and how it can actually be useful for your functional movement, specifically training for parkour. So first of all, I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas. Um, my idea with using weight is that you don't want the weight to be so much that it hinders your movement to the point where you cannot do something um, with at least decent form. Okay. So let's talk about, for example, if I'm doing pull-ups. I just bought this new uh, belt you can put around your hips. Um, right here, okay, and I have about 10 pounds um, on it right now. My goal is to be able to, you know, to increase uh, I'm my strength in my shoulders and stuff while doing this, so I'm gonna put this on real quick. All right, so I'm strapped into this thing. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple pulls real quick. Okay, right now I can do about three with full range of motion, chest to bar, um, with this on, which is about 10 pounds. I go any heavier then I'm not able to complete my range of motion. So, from here. Might be able to get one more. Okay, so, that's pretty good. Ow, my foot. Anyway, moving on from there. Um, if I put too much weight in this, it actually makes it, well, I really can't get myself to the bar. And I know there's been a lot of like uh, talk about, oh, full range of motion, you know, you don't want to lose your mobility and stuff. And some people are like, well, what if you can't always have perfect mobility? I mean, that's not 100% reality. And I do think that's true. But I've been one of those people that has had lack of mobility, really tight shoulders, really tight hips. And I can definitely say that um, while you can, I would still try to train that full range of motion because you don't want to be in that mode all the time where you're definitely just training so high intensity and such heavy weight that you actually hinder your range of motion. I always feel it's better to go with that. So I would start with low weight and work yourself up instead so of starting with really high weight because I know I can like with 50 pounds on me and I've done it with like a 96 pound kid attached to my back. I can do a pull up, but I can't get all the way to the top. All right, so I might do it just every now and then. I just wouldn't do it all the time. Let's talk about another way you can use weight. All right, so you've probably seen these before. They're kind of, people sometimes laugh at them a little bit. These are ankle and wrist weights. These ones are probably about 1.5 pounds each. Um, what I like about these, all right, is that you can still do your basic movements, like if you're a martial artist, or let's just say you're working on your uh, jump technique and you want to kind of load the shoulders a little bit more uh, to develop your uh, arm swing a little bit stronger. This would be a pretty good thing to do because you can still do the jump. Um, it won't necessarily hurt your body as much as it would be if you put a lot of weight on. And you can do a high repetition amount without it affecting you as if you were to put a really uh, heavy amount on. So I'm just doing a normal arm swing here. I'm just going to go in the middle here. If I'm just doing a normal arm swing, in the arms and jumping straight up, okay? That can help me with developing that range of motion. Also, you can just do normal ranges of motion with this because it's such a light weight versus going really heavy with it and not being able to do anything like that. Um, this can also be going to put on your ankles as well. Um, so overall, I think these are actually still a pretty useful tool to use and uh, you can still do um, most of your movements with them, most of your skills. You can do, uh, Climb ups won't be really affected by this that much, but the top of it, when you top out of your climb up, might be uh, your Kongs, all of your different types of vaults, your jumps. Um, your QMs would be affected by this quite a lot because you're having to lift up the bottom of that. So, overall, I would not go over five pounds if you're doing anything that's normal, the kind of range of motion that you would be using. Um, any heavier than that, and you're going to have to really change uh, what you're looking for because we're trying to help our skills out with this just to make them a little bit more difficult. We don't want to overdo it with that. All right, let's look at something else. Um, let's say, uh, so you have two things, like I had those things attached to me, they were strapped to me. Um, the weight, the belt that was around my hips, 
Uh, that was a little more free-hanging, so to speak. Uh, so that kind of gives that bit of an element of instability in there, which is kind of cool. Um, I obviously would not jump with that attached to me. That would be a very bad idea. Um, let's say we have a weight vest. The thing I like about the weight vest, especially the ones that you can change the weight inside of them, is that they secure to your body, usually, so you can still do a lot of movements with them. This one in particular, I feel, is actually a little hindrance to my motion, um, but you can put a lot of weight in this one. So I think this one goes up to about 50 or 45 pounds total of extra weight. So it's really good for that, but obviously it needs to have the strength in it to hold. So because it's so strong of a vest, it hinders a little bit of my motion, so it's hard to do jumping motions. But if I were to practice a couple of precisions with this, obviously it would, I would see very quickly um, that it's challenging me. But the good thing about it is it's pretty sturdy for the most part. You might have to add like an extra band around it or a belt bring it in a little bit tighter, but you could do simple jumps like this. All right, so I'm just doing a basic box jump, um, only like two feet up with the weighted vest, and it's, this is like I said, 50 pounds, it's actually quite a lot. I don't recommend going this high for training with it at least, unless you have some advanced jumps, um, or I've already been going for a while, because if you mess up with this, it's gonna probably give you the worst shinning of your life. So, you know. yeah. So you can see that with the extra weight, I'm still able to go through with that. Um, but like I said, 50 pounds is a bit much for you know someone who's just starting out. Um, first of all, just make sure you have a good precision jump before you even add weight to something. That's the first thing. And remember, you always want to first make sure that whatever you're adding weight to or what you're making harder, you want to have kind of a basic understanding of it first before you do that. Otherwise, it's just asking for problems. Um, also. Uh, I think they have like flex vests too, which kind of like is still a lot of weight, but it, it contours to your body a bit more. If you can find those, those are pretty cool too. Um, let's see, okay, let's say another way to add weight. So we have them where you, hey, so far you have them where you're on, they're on their limbs, so you have like a, between one pound, maybe even half a pound to three, uh, five pounds on your wrists or ankles. That's gonna add a ton of extra, uh, wait for you to swing around because at the end of that lever, that's going to be weighing a lot actually. So trust me, take five, take a half a pound and just hang it out there and see how long you last for while still maintaining a good shoulder posture. Um, that's going to start to drop. You know, after about two minutes of doing that, that's going to be pretty ridiculous. Um, so just keep in mind that over time that's going to be doing that to your body as well. Um, let's see. So let's talk about carrying something. I think that's one of the best things about with parkour. Originally, we're talking about you know training yourself so that you can, in a time of need or urgency, you could help others out either by going to danger or running away from danger. And uh, one thing that I think that's kind of sometimes not done anymore is we think about the fireman's carry. I used to, when I used to train the first two years of my training, we did a couple things with fireman's carry, and you realize just like how difficult it is to actually do something when you have someone's lifeless body on your back or not, you know, unconscious body on your back trying to do something. Pretty much all you're able to do then is maybe a couple of low step faults. Um, or have to hoist the person onto them, push them over the object, and then pull yourself over it. Uh, you obviously cannot jump, you know, um, very well anyway, um, or risk injuring yourself and the person on your back. Uh, you know, really all you can do is run with them, and then, like I said, do things where you have to place them down, pick them back up, and things like that. So that's, you know, that's a big thing as far as thinking about extra weight. But let's look at something smaller weight. Like, let's say all we have is some weird object. Like uh, I have this foam roller right here, okay, and that's kind of a weird object. It's, it's not perfectly round. Um, it doesn't have to be this. It can be like a cone or anything like that. I have another. I'm gonna use a medicine ball in a second. But let's just say I do a normal uh, like wall run with this. Okay, let's check it out. Now the interesting about the interesting thing about this is that um, it takes away the use of one arm. Obviously, I have to hold it fairly tight to my body to keep it from moving around. And then I have to deal with uh, the lack of range of motion I'm going to have because there's an object blocking my leg or my arm or something like that. So I'm going to try and run up this wall with this thing. And I have to go underneath this thing too. So you can see that can be at a level of difficulty. And this like weighs like what, three pounds maybe? Ian, how much do you think this thing weighs? Three About three pounds? Yeah. Anyway, like let's say I have a medicine ball. 
So you can do this with a medicine ball or like a small rock or something. Uh, this is obviously much smaller. Um, you can hold it into a lot tighter, but it still adds that extra weight and kind of that weirdness of it being out there. Something a little bit bigger but lighter, you know, that still adds a bit of odd uh, to it because again, it's big, it's in the way. Um, even trying just basic vaults with something like this, trying to calm with one arm, you know, stuff like that, that's going to add a lot to uh, your training. Uh, let's see, I think I covered the basic stuff. Carrying something, having it strapped to you, and then having it either strapped to your limb or something like that. So like I said, you know, play around with it. See uh, what it does for you. It can, uh, it can add quite a difference to what you do. And just remember that always take time to recover after doing something that's that intense, especially because it's gonna be not just working your muscles, but it's gonna be loading the joints as well a lot differently. So, you know, train with, train with care and be smart about that stuff, all right? You have a nice day and see you guys again soon. Think of it this way, guys. I have a four pound ball, all right, or whatever, and I wanna do a muscle up with it. I don't have a backpack to strap it to my back or anything like that, and I have a couple of options. This is one I remember, compliments of Tyson. Um, I just heard that you do this. Um, I never actually saw you do it, but I'm gonna try it today. So, here we go. Right here. Stop up. Grab it. Oh. And then from there, kinda get yourself on top of the rail. And that is substantially difficult, but I did it. So there you go, functional training with some weight.